This show is brought to you by GoDaddy and Netflix. Hey guys and welcome to episode 13 of Food Mob, by unlucky episode 13. We're cooking up some delightful kebabs today. We're going to show you how to prep a whole chicken, make some homemade hummus. Action packed episode, really, really nice. We're all a little bit subdued today because myself, Aaron and Lauren were at a festival all weekend um, here in Ireland. So we're actually working quite a bit, but we're just traipsing through the muck. Some photos, Aaron put some photos up there. Uh, we'll talk about the festival afterwards. Anyway, getting to other people's photos first this week. Facebook, tons of interaction on Facebook. I've never seen more photos than this week for some reason. You're all snap happy at the moment. Um, first one up there is a really nice one of the stuffed potatoes. Uh, people putting the logo in the background. People's feedback on the stuffed potatoes in general, pretty good. Um, a lot of people very glad that they could add bacon in there because it was a vegetarian meal. A lot of people annoyed that there was bacon in there. But look, trying to keep both people, uh, both groups of people is not. Trying to keep both groups of people happy is not hard. It's tough, it's tough. It was a long, long weekend. Next photo there is from Paul Bland, who made gorgeous beef wellington. Really, really nice roast dinner. Looks absolutely gorgeous. A quick question that he had was, how do you make the perfect roast potatoes? His, as you can see, are a little bit um, sort of white and they're not crispy. Um, done everything else perfectly. So what I would do is a little bit of uh, salt, a little bit of pepper, boil them up in water, uh, cook them sort of like a third, or like maybe, say 25% cook them, strain them, ruffle them up in the pan, a little bit of salt and pepper, even a little bit of paprika to add a little bit of color into a tray with a little bit of oil into the oven. Perfect roast potatoes, just let them go nice and crispy. Um, but he's made a very good effort there. Next one is uh, from Scott Hoop Hoopengarmer. Scott Hoopengarmer, that can't be a real name either, that's another poor name. Maybe German. Scott Hoopengarmer, yeah. So Scott Hoopengama has finally decided to get a grill pan after watching you use it so much. Butterfly a rocky chicken breast and grilled it up with pineapple, also toasted the bread. Loads of people buy in the uh, char grill pans. I was talking to a guy called uh, John here at the weekend who had bought a grill pan off the back of it. Tons of people seem to like them. This little fella here, we're actually using it again today. Like I was saying, they're about, I think that one, I can't even remember, but maybe $60, $70, quite expensive, but really, really good. And the people who've bought them because of the show um, seem to be getting great use out of them. So everybody's a winner, um, apart from us, because we should have, uh, have them sponsoring us, I reckon. We're selling grill pans like they're going out of fashion. Next one is from Benedict Barenberger. Um, even when you don't have a garden, there is no need to buy dried basil. Chives, parsley, and prickly well basil grow nice and easy on a windowsill. It's easier to buy the ready basil in pot and cultivating it from seed, blah, blah, blah. Right, I'm not saying blah, 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 but, but um, basically he's, uh, he's telling everybody on the Facebook page that you should be making herbs, planting them at home, inside. Absolutely. Lauren, you've planted a few yourself. I did. They weren't very successful, though. Oh, they okay. lasted about a week. I think you're meant to pick them. I didn't pick them enough, I think, when they're ready, pick the leaves and they grow back. Yeah. Definitely. We should probably do an episode on how to grow herbs. I think it's a... Uh, I don't think we should. No, we can't do it. We'll figure out how to do it. And then we'll... Uh, Aaron, you probably grow herbs of a totally different variety, yeah, do you? Yeah, I am, yeah. Especially in the new house, slowly. Aaron's moved out. Um, exciting times. You're living on your own now, eh? Huh? No, yeah. Just well, went shopping there. It was a lot of fun. What did you... Uh, I'd say there was a lot of pot noodles. No, no, no. Lots of nice stuff. Well, anything really, from the show? Can't remember anything there. No, bacon and... Uh, Pesto and pasta, which is a recipe you're going to make soon. Very nice. Uh, next one is from Lonnie Barrios. Oh, that's they had one last week. That's the porn star. Yeah. Lonnie Barrios has sent in veggie stuffed potatoes. That's actually quite rude saying that about somebody's name. He'd be a bit annoyed. Veggie stuffed potatoes looks very nice. Uh, quickly jumping over to Flickr. A couple of photos on there. First one, stunning. Although I don't know what they've done. Check those out. What's that on top of the baps? On top of the burgers? They look like, like it looks like a donut or not a donut, like a Swiss, like, like a Danish, Danish. 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 Oh, yeah. I don't think it's a Danish though. I think it's just like some artisan bread. <laughs> Love the way that people are putting the food lo mob logo in the uh, background, apart from my big ugly head. But the logo looks good. And the last one is from. Oh, the duck. So a couple of people. Not many people cook the duck, probably because it's a little bit challenging. But very expensive. Expensive. Is that the problem? 
don't ever think of cost, which is, uh, which is bad. Although today, chicken, we've got a great one for you. Uh, it's showing you how to save some money. Last but not least, the young gentleman on Twitter has taken the food mob challenge. Well, he set himself the food mob challenge. I didn't even know that it existed. Um, Arville, remember him from last week? I think he was doing the first one last week. Six days in a row he's cooked a food mob dish. The last one is the prawns. Looks absolutely spectacular. He got all the ingredients at the start of the week, wrote to us, explained to us that he was doing it one, one dish every single day. And it's a, he said it's, it's changed the way that he's sort of eaten and cooking and never really cooked before. And for somebody who's never cooked before, that is a pretty impressive uh, prawn pasta that he's done. So very, very impressive there. Well done for taking the, uh, the six day challenge and uh, sort of inventing it yourself. Great idea. Right, enough photos. Um, let's move on to cooking something. We are cooking kebabs this week. They're going to be absolutely delicious. <coughs> sort of real nice comfort food. Um, I'm not sure the American word for kebab. I think it's pretty much the same. Um, basically little pita bread stuffed with some nice roasted lamb, uh, salad, a little bit of homemade hummus, making a little cucumber and um, lemon dip now, which should be very nice. So the first thing we're going to do, cucumber, just peel them. The reason we want to get rid of the skin is because it's quite sort of, when we put it into sauce, it's quite sort of chewy and we want this real nice and sort of delicate and flavoursome. So, away with that skin on the outside. Do you enjoy the festival, guys? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying I did. Like. We were quite lucky that we got some very, very nice seats for some of the, the gigs because we were working there. So we got sort of, not backstage passes, but like special passes that got us into a few cool places. But if you, I'll give you a couple of the pictures of the muck to put up iron. It was basically rained solid for three days. Oh no, the last day was like completely bone dry. Yeah, but Didn't at that stage once. it was like that much muck. Oh was... yeah, but still like, but the last day was the best. Except they didn't get to go backstage at Eminem because apparently he's a pussy. Oh really? He's like, oh no, no one except like complete VIPs. So, so Jay-Z was probably the highlight for me. Hands down. Uh, Black Eyed Peas were not bad. Um, what else? Black yeah, Jay-Z, Black Eyed Peas, got to interview some of the bands, but not, not the bigger ones. Um, so all I did there was I took out the seeds from the middle, the seeds and cucumber. Cucumbers are made up of 90% water. Um, and basically taking those seeds out because we don't want a real sort of insipid little watery sauce. We want something nice and crunchy. So dice that cucumber up. Simplest little sauce and dip in the world is you could, you could serve it with uh, like little crackers or absolutely anything really. In goes your cucumber, squeeze of lemon juice, take out the little pips. And make sure not to waste these. Waste, yeah, somebody's yeah, given out about the... Can't be wasting half a lemon. Wasting out, given... I'll geez, bring I can't up. even talk today. I'll bring so, it home. Uh, so, yeah. so are, you on a, are you on a budget at the moment? Yeah. Absolutely, so any kind of food scraps or anything would uh, be... Uh, <laughs> that bad? Yeah, absolutely. If anybody's got any food that they can send, Aaron, his address is Harold's Cross. Do I really want it? Yeah, yeah. Harold's Cross. Just <laughs> yeah. Send it there, they'll find it. Send me. it to Harold's Cross and he'll get uh, the food. So, squeeze the lemon in there. My hands were nice and clean so I could uh, get rid of the pips. And then just a little bit of natural yogurt. Nice sort of healthy sauce as well. There's not, nothing too bad in here. You say yogurt? Yogurt. Yogurt. What do you say? I used to live in England, so I say yogurt. 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 <laughs> so what do, I say yogurt. You say you yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah. I'd say American people say yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. But they even do they even have yogurt or are they or are they call frozen yogurts? Yeah, yeah. Do American people have yogurt? No, but like do they call it yogurt? I don't know. <laughs> what like do you think it hasn't been invented no, over I'm there? Sure or? it has. Like I know frozen yogurt, but I'm just, I just completely. So they have frozen yogurt, but they don't have normal yogurt. That's what you're saying. Exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bring that together real nicely and a little taste. Delicious. Now that's, we're going to set to one side for a little bit later on. That's our first sauce. Our second sauce, very, very popular sauce. I'll move Mr. Chicken over there. Bring this fellow in here. This is a food processor. You could use a little blender or a hand blender, whatever you've got. I'm going to show you how to make the quickest hummus in the world. So, tin of chickpeas. You could get these fresh. Lose the water, you get them fresh, but you gotta soak them overnight, cook them, blah, blah, blah. Who's got time to do all that sort of shit? Not us. Right, in there. Generous glug of olive oil. That's what's gonna sort of bring it together and make it really nice and smooth. 
You can buy hummus in the shops, but like you'll see how quick this is. I just don't see any reason why you should um, buy it pre-prepared. You can make this in a couple of minutes. Great to bring to a festival as well. Hummus? Yep. Stephen O'Leary had hummus, didn't he? Yep. yep. I saw that. The food was horrendous at the festival. You know what? The last horrendous. Day, the last day we found this Chinese place at about 11 o'clock on Sunday night and it was amazing. Seriously? The Chinese, it was just some random Chinese place. It was like a fiber, got some uh, rice and some chicken balls and it was just amazing. How many beers did you have at that stage? Five. Yeah, that's why it was amazing. Um, in goes the garlic. Did I put lemon in? No. Did I? No. no. Wait, wait, where's the other half of that lemon? I squeezed it. You, you squeeze both halves? Yep. People like to give out in the forums about uh, waste and food hygiene. I could have taken that too. lemon home. <laughs> so a nice, generous squeeze of lemon. I'm telling you, this is really the easiest, simplest, nicest sauce. Quick wash of the hands. And... Dancing. Dancing, gotta find it. There it is. Ah. This is not the smoothest show in the history of shows. Things are a little bit delicate today. Right, in goes the salt, pepper, and then just whack the lid on. Literally 30 seconds. Important thing with this is to sort of season it as you go along. Chickpeas, chickpeas are quite sort of bland in taste, so it does take quite a little kick. Things like the garlic and stuff are going to sort of mature and get stronger, but done. Could not be easier than that. That's your second sauce ready in a couple of minutes. Lose our food processor out into a bowl. And you got two awesome dips that are really the sort of smooth. <laughs> yeah, that are really the sort of lifeblood of the whole dish. So in that you goes. also leave the blade in. If yeah. You want an extra little bit of kick. If you want a nice bite to it. Right. In that goes. Now time for a quick clean down. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Right. <laughs> two sauces ready to go. Now next part, obviously the most important part, is the lamb. The thing with this dish is kebabs, you could pretty much put anything you wanted in there. I mean, I'm doing it with lamb today because I think lamb works really well. Um, I know some people are not mad about lamb. Are you guys mad about lamb? Yeah. Love lamb. Lamb's, Love it. Lamb's good. Yeah. Um, so I'm using rosemary, which works especially well with lamb. So just breaking it up. Very, very rough and rustic. Uh, I'm going to go with a couple of cloves of garlic. You could use chicken. You could use beef. You could use kangaroo. You could use you could use fish. Yeah, I don't think fish would be good. You'd have to rabbit. use rabbit. Rabbit. When do you eat rabbit? When would I not eat rabbit? <laughs> I would never eat rabbit. Have you ever eaten? I would. Ne I'd eat everything, but I wouldn't eat a rabbit. What about dog? No, I wouldn't eat dog. Well, well, there. so you wouldn't That's eat not everything. everything then. Well, no, but I was saying I'd eat, I eat the what's the baby baby deer? Fall. Fall. Oh, oh veal. Is it veal? Is it something baby? Venison. I'd eat that. Oh, wait, is it fall? You can't. You can't eat. Fall is baby. If I if I made you guys a, a little rabbit um, souffle, a rabbit, <laughs> a rabbit stew, you'd love it. I would. You would love it. Why could you not eat a rabbit? I just couldn't. Like. Why? Because the little ears. Yeah, it's too cute. Yeah, you eat a chocolate bunny, but you don't give out about that. What about a cow like sitting out all nice and cute in the field? Oh, they're all muddy. That's the reason why. I want a pig as a pet. Have you seen the cool new little like trendy pigs in London and stuff now? People get these little, I think they're dwarfed pigs. Yeah, yeah, I swear to God. They're like little, they put them on a lead and take them for walks, I swear to God. Ah, oh, they're very cool. Well, if you look after it and feed it lots of like. See, one week, Lauren walking down the street with a pig. Yeah. On a leash. If you feed the pig lots of nice like bacon and sausages. And... It'll taste even better. <laughs> yeah. Right, hands are clean. Garlic, rosemary, salt, pepper. Real simple. Oh, 
Lauren, come here and put that chili in on top, will you? Oh. Thing in How exciting, just drizzle it. First thing in the show, gone, gone wrong. Just all over it. Okay, let's. Right, so chili in there looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, just gonna set that there, wash my hands. And I'm actually gonna let that marinate for about 10 minutes. Um, if you did have some time and you were sort of, you know, inviting guests over or anything in advance, I'd make that a couple hours in advance because you want the sort of garlic, the chili, everything to kick in and really have a nice bite to it. Right, so as that marinates, I'm gonna tell you about our first sponsor, which this week is Netflix. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. For only $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can really receive unlimited DVDs directly to their homes. With Netflix, there are never any dates. There are never any dates? Never there are any, any dates. Never any dates on Netflix. If you go onto Netflix, you'll never find Not a date. Notmatch.com, people. If you go onto Netflix, there are never any due dates and no late, late, no, no late fees apply. Um, go along to netflix.com forward slash foodmob and you will get a great discount. Fantastic way of getting movies. Um, I wish I had it tonight. I'd love to just, you know when you feel real tired after a weekend, you just want to watch a movie. That's what I want tonight. I don't have it. Right, so our lovely lamb has been heating up. <laughs> hasn't been heating up at all. Our pan has been heating up, our lamb has been marinating. We're just going to pick it up. I'm just using little lamb, um, I think they call them chops. What do they call these guys? Little chops. lamb steaks, I think they call they're them. They're chops. Yeah, they're not, they're not really chops. Um, any sort of lamb that you can get that's nice and tender, that's a nice steak will work perfectly for this. If you're using chicken, plain chicken breast, uh, a nice piece of like fillet steak or something will work really well. I'm gonna cook those for about two minutes on each side, really nice and golden brown and caramelize that meat up. Right, so it's nice and smoky in here. You got loads of unbelievable aromas coming off there. I'm gonna flip them over. Got some lovely brown color there. Nice caramelization. I'm gonna turn that heat down a bit now. There's not much more cooking to do. About another minute, 90 seconds on those sides, then we'll be ready to take them out and assemble our lovely kebabs. Right, so those have been on there. <coughs> the chili's catching in my throat. We're gonna take them off. And we're just gonna rest this lamb now for about maybe a minute or so. Off that comes. Unbelievable aromas, garlic, rosemary, a little bit of chili. Just scrape that pan ready. There's still enough heat in there. We're actually gonna heat up our little uh, pita bread. So, very easy to heat up. Just a little drizzle of olive oil. You guys hungry? Yeah. Well, that's quite emphatic. Yes! Right, just rub the olive oil in, both sides. I don't think there's gonna be enough for you tonight, Aaron. Really? So the uh, eight pita breads over there, and the four <laughs> lamb steaks. <laughs> yeah, pretty hungry. I've noticed, I don't actually watch Food Mob, because I hate watching myself in the camera, but I keep getting comments all week about the funny stuff that Aaron's doing in the editing. I'm thinking something now, I'm kinda tired. Mm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, um, yeah, so the last couple of weeks, uh, I think... Suggestions just, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, some suggestions. Give Aaron a help out to be creative. Okay, so the pita breads don't actually take much. All you want to do is sort of bring them back to life and, and soften them up a little bit. So there's enough heat in there. Right, so off that comes. Trim off the end. And we're just going to make a little pocket in the middle. So if you just reach in there... It should open up into a nice little pocket, which it does. Thank God. Thank God for that. Now, going back to our lovely sauces, this is the absolute key, what's gonna make the, the difference between this. Nice, generous spray of the hummus. A generous amount of your sort of cucumber and um, lemon yogurt. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on the side just for dipping of each. I don't think you can ever really be too generous with those sauces. On those go. Also gonna serve up for the health conscious a little bit of lettuce. And then I like to just sort of put it out there and just let people sort of, you know, 
assemble it as they want to themselves. So our meat's been resting. Just gonna pop them over here. Should be nice and just sort of tender and pink in the middle, which it is. Just some nice thin strips. You get loads of really bad meat in kebabs. I think that's why they've got a bad name. If you go to like little, you know, corner stands or trucks after a night out, Not very nice. it's really bad meat. But if you do it like this, real healthy, absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm just gonna lift that lid up, pop it in there. Another tiny little bit of salad. And that's pretty much it. It's all sort of self-assembly now. You need to just dive in there, make sure your hands are nice and clean, wedge the meat in there, get some salad in there, spoon the sauce over it. Really, really homemade, delicious kebabs. Get stuck in, guys. Now, as the guys get stuck into that, I'm gonna tell you about our second sponsor this week, which is GoDaddy. Web hosting from GoDaddy includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to hosting connection, the place to install over 30 free applications, sure to help you get the most from your help Bing plan and website. Uh, if you want to check out revision3.com forward slash GoDaddy, loads of discounts on there. Please, please support the show if you're buying any sort of domains or anything online. You can use the code MOB1 to get 10% off any order. MOB2 gets you $5, $5 off any order, $30 or more. MOB3 is a $7.99 domain, so you could basically have your own domain for eight bucks. Can't beat that. Mob4 gets you 15% off any order of $75 or more. That's for people buying lots of domains. Tons of stuff there. Go and get your domains on GoDaddy. Great way of supporting the show. Right, a tip this week. Annoys me when I go into the supermarket and I look in the shelves and I see how much is two breasts of chicken normally? You're, you're on a budget? Four or five euro. Four or five euros? Six, six euros? Six euro for three, I saw. So six for three, so, so five, six bucks for two or three breasts. Euros, pounds, wherever it is. It's, it's pretty much the same. This little fella here, a chicken, um, it's not organic, it'll cost you five pounds, okay? Five euros, five dollars, um, in somewhere like Tesco's. Now you could obviously go and get something more expensive, more organic, but I think we're cooking for people on a budget on this show. I wanna show you just how much, how many meals you can get out of one whole chicken, right? So these little fellas here, the wings. There's a little natural joint in there which you can cut through, so that gives you a wing. You flip them around. Now, if you try and cut, it's actually quite hard, but you just have to feel for it. I kind of know where it's at, but there's a little natural joint there that just allows you to cut that wing off very, very simply. Two wings, right? Now, they'll usually be tied up with a little bit of string. If you want to go sort of medium uh, chicken quality, I'd go to the butchers. If you've got a local butchers, um, he'll, give you, he'll give you a nice big chicken, possibly, you know, organic or corn fed. Now, what I'm doing is, just cutting around the edge, just down in there. And now, I've made an incision through the skin. Now, I just want you to listen to this, if you could hear it, Aaron. Wow, that is very sexy. That's <laughs> very sexy. So that's basically that bone there just popped out, okay? Now, I just want to follow in underneath and get, this, uh, get in and around the bone. It's not actually very hard. You obviously want to make sure you've got a nice sort of sharp knife. So just cut in there and you got that lovely big fella there, right? Now those you, drumsticks, you could use them like maybe in a nice sort of stew, you could barbecue those, tons of stuff that you could do, right? Exactly the same on the other one. So basically, making that little incision around the skin, and then the sign that Lauren loves, well, that one didn't pop as much, but it's, it's literally like your bone popping out. Not for the faint hearted, I guess, but look, I think it's important that people know how to butcher meat, you know, even basics like this, because, People are disgusted by meat, you know, if they see blood and stuff. But look, it's what you're eating every day. So this is just the, the, what you're paying for it when you go into the supermarket and pay six bucks or pounds, or whatever, for two chicken breasts is convenience. This doesn't take long to do. Um, there's your two fellas there. Now, exactly the same way with the leg. If you just feel there, there's a little natural sort of um, split in the bone. In it goes, and then you've got a drumstick and your little thigh there. So you could make little stews with those. It's just sort of separating them into more portions. So again, just feel for that little natural break in the bone. I missed it there. And down in you go. So everybody thinks a chicken, you know, you can all you could do is roast it, something like that. Look how many portions we're getting out of it again. So again, little drumsticks, little guys that you can pop onto the barbecue. 
Now, getting the breasts. This is the, the slightly trickier part, okay? So this fella down here is the bone, breastbone. Goes all the way down. Now what I want to do is I want to get my knife running along that bone. I want to sort of not lose much meat, so basically just make an incision right along the bone using the tip of your knife. You getting this, Aaron? Yeah, I'm getting it, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's, just, it's hard to see it up close, I know. Um, and now what you'll see is the breastbone has just been sort of exposed there. So I'm just following the bone all the way down. So you see there, there's the sort of the, the cavity there. You're just sticking right as close to it as you possibly can and the meat is coming off there. So again, I'm just gonna cut down in through a little natural break in the bone there. So how many chicken breasts do you got about two? Two, yeah. Unless you got a mutant chicken where it might have more breasts than two. Right, so there's your second breast. Now that looks slightly different to what you get in the supermarket, right? But that's because it's got the skin on it, it's got the little bone on them up there. If you wanted it like the supermarket, there you go. Just pull it off and that's what you recognize there, yeah? So that's your first breast. Exactly the same with your second breast. Important to remember that this is all costing you five whatever currency it is, dollars, pounds, euros. A little bit of work involved. But for somebody like yourself, a man on a budget, Aaron, yeah. trying to save his money to buy cocktails for the ladies, yes, the important stuff, um, you might want to get a chicken at the start of the week. I'll just trim that off there. And there's your second breast. So for your five euros, this is like, it blows my mind what you can get it. Here's the first part, right? A chicken carcass. You've no idea how much flavor's in that. Anybody who's made soup, chop it up into a pot some vegetables, stew it up, maybe some noodles. Absolutely tons and tons and tons of flavor in there. Having fun over there, yeah? No, it's not right. You don't like the butchery? I know what it is and I still eat it, but I just, I couldn't, I don't know. It's the noises, I think, and the, I really don't like it when you pull the skin off. Just like, like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's your chicken uh, carcass. Gorgeous soup, I can't, that's how they make stocks, soups, everything, loads of flavor there. Couple of those, maybe make a little barbecue for yourself. Um, chicken wings, you're, not much you can do there. You can freeze them and, and wait until you've got enough for, like two's not gonna be enough for a portion, but throw them in with, with something else. Um, your chicken breasts, do whatever you normally do with them. Um, your little thighs, little just gorgeous meat. Brown meat, chicken meat is absolutely full of flavor, much better than the breast. Char <laughs> Aaron's giving me the eyes. I think, yeah. the, I think that means the show oh, is too long. Um, it takes longer when you're, when you're feeling like we are. Char grill does. Anyway, you can see what you can get there for a fiver. I think it makes complete sense to go out and maybe try at least and bone your own chicken. If anything, it's a bit of fun and follow that demo. It's a little bit of a learning curve. Thank you very much to Lauren. Thank you very much to Azar. Yeah. Do, do people know you as Azar? No. Well, not really people now do. Uh, everyone's calling you. That's what I call Aaron is Azar. So, and Lauren calls him as well. Um, help us out this week. We're setting a little challenge for you by subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash foodmo. We're trying to become the number one channel in Ireland. We've still got some way to go. The big problem is you two are up against us in Ireland. So that's, so that's you, a little bit you, tricky. You like foodmo, but you like YouTube. Yeah, so we're not quite at the YouTube level yet. That's it for this week's show. Lovely kebab, showed you how to make a chicken. Aaron wants to go and buy cocktails uh, for the ladies tonight. So we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.